So you're looking to paint your PlayStation 4 controller, and you want it to look impressive. Well, my friend, you came to the right place. Thank you for checking out my tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you some really cool techniques that you can use to paint your own PlayStation 4 controller. Now, you're not limited to just the PlayStation 4 controller. You can use a variety of techniques from all of my do-it-yourself tutorials that I've been creating for the past two years. So what are you going to learn in this tutorial? Well, why am I asking you? I'm the one giving the tutorial. My God. You're going to learn how to take apart your controller. You're going to learn how to sand your controller. You're going to learn how to paint your controller. Yes, that's what you're here for. You're going to learn how to clear coat and protect that hard work that you just did and also feel free to be creative create your own designs it's what these videos are meant for welcome to my tutorial feel free to navigate the tutorial at any time by using the menu by clicking on my logo at the bottom left hand corner of your screen whether it's the last step you left off on or the next step that you need to finish you will always have access to the menu be sure to check out my website where other subscribers have submitted their photos of their finished projects from using my do-it-yourself tutorials. And please click subscribe so you can join the thousands of people who are already watching my videos every day. Safety first, everybody. Now, you want to make sure to grab yourself a respirator mask so you don't be getting high on the paint fumes. We don't want that. Now, I picked up some extra buttons off of eBay. I will show you what to look up so you can do that yourself. I also picked up some Duplicolor acrylic enamel spray paint for this project. And I also got some lacquer clear coat. You're going to need yourself a bucket and water to do this trick and make sure to get yourself an eyeglass size screwdriver and 400 grit sandpaper. We're going to go over to eBay and look up our color for our buttons. So you put in whatever color, then PS4 buttons, and you will get a list of different buttons that you can use for your controller. You will find something that suits you. It is also extremely important to pay attention to the serial numbers on the back of your controller. And the older controllers, they have no problems with a lot of these buttons, but the newer controllers, they, uh, they, you have to replace the R1 and R2 buttons and the touchpad and paint those yourself. To take this apart, it's very, very easy. We're going to use our eyeglasses sized screwdriver and we're going to remove the four screws that are on the back here, here, here and here. There is nothing underneath of the sticker. However, we do need to remove it uh, to paint this project. So since it's a new controller, it comes right off very easy. We can also place this off to the side so that we can reapply it at the end of our project if we feel it necessary. Go ahead and unscrew all of the screws, obviously one at a time, and uh, make sure to not lose those screws. Put them somewhere safe. I prefer to put them in a small tray that's very safe keeping. I suggest you do something like this as well. Now we're going to take a small flathead screwdriver and we're going to very carefully pry open uh, just enough to get a gap to where our fingers can fit underneath. Now the bottom of the controller is rather difficult at first to pull apart. Uh, just slowly work at it very carefully, not putting too much pressure and it will pop open. On the inside of this controller is a ribbon cable which is connecting the LED to the controller board on the inside. So you don't want to pull it apart really fast and risk ripping that. Take your time here and uh, you'll eventually get it open. And make note here that the ribbon cable is facing blue side away from the battery. That's a mental note. You need to make sure to remember that later. You just grab this and pull up it comes right out. Now you can safely pull the back of the controller away. We're going to go ahead and remove the battery now. You can just grab a hold of it at the wires base right here at the plug and carefully pull upward, uh, slightly working it back and forth and it will come off. Just set that off to the side somewhere safe. 
Now this white piece comes off really easy. You just grab it and then pull it up just like I did there. And the light disperser is not connected to anything really. You can actually just grab it and pull it back and then upward it will come out. Don't worry if you break the little foam there. It's not really that important. Now we need to remove the LED from the bottom of this controller. What we're going to do that is there's a small silver screw there and we're going to take our eyeglasses screw and we're going to pull that right out. It is connected with a tab. You just grab it and pop it right off and then put that someplace safe. Now we're going to remove the uh, thing that holds the battery in place and this kind of grabs a hold of that board. So you'll grab a hold of it from the side and kind of pull away from the board and then pull towards you. It will come right off. Next we're going to remove the touch pads ribbon cable by the same method we did before. Grabbing a hold of it and pulling it upward. It will come right out. There's a screw located here. You will unscrew that. Once we have that removed, we can then pull our controller apart. You'll grab it and basically pull it away from the shell. This gets the touchpad uh, out of place and it doesn't break anything. You don't risk ripping that cable. Go ahead and remove your joysticks by pulling up lightly on them. They will pop off eventually. They might seem a little tight at first, but just give it a little, t a little nudge. Give it a little what for, it'll come right off. Now we're going to go ahead and pull off these, uh, these trigger buttons. Now on the newer controllers, the little spring here stays in place, but if you have an older controller, you're going to have to watch that spring and put it someplace safe. Your bumper buttons come off in the same fashion that your joysticks do. Very easy, just pull them off, and now your controller is apart. Next we're going to move to the button pads, just grab a hold of them, pull them towards you, peeling it away from the controller, and then very carefully we're going to tip this controller over and dump the buttons out. Make sure they don't go flying all over the place. You don't want to lose anything if you didn't happen to buy new buttons. If you did, whatever. Throw them around, let the cat play with them, do what you do. All right, so sanding. How important is sanding? Sanding is so important that I swear to God, if one of you asks me how important sanding is, I'm going to come to your house with 400 grit sandpaper. That's pretty fine sandpaper. I'm going to give you a tree, and I'm going to say, sand me a goddamn canoe. Don't you ever ask me how important sanding is. Basically, it's pretty important. You're going to have to do it. Don't be lazy about it. Just do it. It doesn't take that long. All you have to do is sand off the top layer. It will be a matte color when you're finished. That's how you'll know that you're done. All right, since we're gonna paint our touchpad, we're gonna cover up the connection part of the ribbon cable with some blue painter's tape so that way it functions properly once we put this all back together. Yes, you can paint your touchpad. It will work. I've done it on other touchpad type devices. It will work. One more time, it will work. Uh, when you go to primer this, that's the thing, you gotta primer it first. And we're gonna use a like paint primer. So if you get Duplicolor, use Duplicolor primer and lightly dust over the entire project, making sure that it's uh, adhered to all sides. Also, you wanna be sure to uh, wrap up your right and left bumper buttons with uh, some blue painters tape around the bottom to avoid getting paint on there just in case again you're using a newer controller you want to be able to make sure that those buttons will fit into place and your buttons will work freely change my ways yeah For our first coat of paint, it is important that with brand new can, you put it, you point it off to the side, you spray it a couple times, make sure that it's flowing right, and uh, no drips and stuff like that. And then we're going to lightly coat our project once on all angles, very, very briefly, and only spraying within our sweeps. 
you can see that while I'm spraying the paint, I'm sweeping left to right, and then once I've come to the point of my, you know, a full left point, a full left swing, I let go of the, of the nozzle, and then as I'm pulling right within that sweep, I am also hitting the nozzle. So it's only applying while I'm in motion. You understand? Very, very easy technique. Eventually it becomes muscle memory. It's also quite fun and uh, you can get a little carried away with your first coat of paint. Make sure that you're just doing it very, very lightly. Very lightly. This will build up over a course of three different coats and we're going to let it dry for about 30 minutes in between each coat. The first coat, as I've mentioned, you want it to be really, really light. You don't have to have solid coverage all over the whole thing because as we apply more coats, the thicker the paint will be and it's actually going to adhere to the uh, controller a lot better. With Duplicolor, you're actually able to see the divots in the, uh, in the grip of the controller still on the back side of it. So that's really cool. That's one of the things I really love about Duplicolor paint. It's nice and thin and it goes on very easily. Now you see I chose to elevate this, uh, which I should have done in the very first place, so when you're going to do your controller, make sure to elevate it up on something. This avoids paint from gathering at the bottom of your project because of gravity and creating inconsistencies in your paint. So be sure to elevate your project before you paint. For our third coat, we want to make sure to identify where any place is that doesn't have a solid coat of paint on it. Uh, this is our final coat, so we want to make sure that we get it right. Pay extra attention to that area that I just showed you, and if you need to, get low and angle your paint upwards. We're going to spray this kind of up, and then we're going to work our way over and continue to apply it the way we have in the previous two steps. All right, for this trick, we're gonna to need to get a bucket with water, and you wanna make sure to have enough water that you can completely submerge your top of your controller down into it. We're going to cover the top of the water with paint, and that's enamel paint. You need to make sure that what you are using is enamel because it will sit on the top, and it really makes this, uh, this whole technique work out. If you use lacquer, it's not gonna work right, it's not gonna look good, you're gonna be upset, and you're not gonna, 
it's not my fault. I'm telling you right here, right now, you gotta use enamel paint. Pretty easy, right? I used a lot more white in this because I wanted to be the prominent color. Uh, you can see the back there behind the bucket. I have already painted the top of this controller and I painted it a solid white. The reason why is because, as you can see there, there are holes in the paint at times and uh, that, if, there, if you put your controller into that, it's going to be very, very thin there and you're gonna see black of the controller unless you use whatever base color you prefer to use. Once it's time to start dipping, your paint's gonna kind of basically cover over everything, basically like that. It's kind of creamy looking because I used white, but it's basically covering the whole top. You don't see any water. Now we're gonna stir that up and I used a coat hanger, a metal coat hanger for that. I don't want what I'm sticking into this to take out a whole bunch of paint and leave a bunch of holes. Now make sure that you have a kitchen rubber glove, so something that you would use to wash the dishes with. You're gonna grab a hold of your controller. There's these grooves in the back, fits into your hand just fine, actually quite nice. You can just grab a hold of it and uh, we're gonna dip this from the bottom downward, okay? So all at once in one swift motion, we're gonna just dip it down inside. Now we're gonna take something and clear off the paint that's sitting over the top. Now this was a little difficult. That piece was kind of uh, big and I couldn't really work it off very easily at first, but I did get it out of there. It does look fantastic. Now when you see this, you're probably thinking, my God, dude, well, you're shaking it. That's what you're, that's what you're thinking right now. We'll let it get up here to the screen and it's not really gonna look that impressive right now. It actually kind of looks like someone just took my controller and maybe ate a bunch of Thousand Island dressing and then threw up all over my hand. But I assure you, you've already seen what the finished project looked like. This will look good. What we're gonna do is, uh, while it's still wet, we're gonna tap off all the water. And we're gonna hit it flat, and we're gonna hit it from the side, and we're gonna make sure to get all of that water and all those lumps away. Now that we let our project dry for about an hour, and we've used Duplicolor paint, Duplicolor enamel paint, it's, it's dry enough that we can kinda touch it a little bit. We don't wanna touch it too hard because uh, we can leave fingerprints in there, but I decided that I was gonna go ahead and install, uh, or apply rather, the PlayStation badge to kind of give this a much more official, fresh out of the box look when it's all put together. It's gonna be a really cool uh, added flair to it. It kind of distinguishes the difference between stuff that looks you know, amateur and professional. Uh, if you want to be able to use a badge like that, there is a link for you in the description below. Be sure to check that out. Let him know that I sent you if you choose to buy stuff, just so he knows that I'm, I'm helping him out. He's a good guy. He's always there. He's always eager to please. Instructions come with this. Very easy to follow. You just apply it. Uh, there's a film that kind of holds it all together, and then you just... Once you've got it where you want it to be, you just pull that film away, and it leaves nothing but these awesome metal, it's actual metallic, well, metallic, it is metal, uh, it's an actual metal badge that you're applying to this. Now that we have that applied, we're going to go ahead and set this up for our first coat of clear coat. Our first coat of clear coat should be rather thin. Uh, I feel, looking back on this, that I kind of put a little bit too much clear coat uh, on the first coat. It's not really going to affect any performance out of it, but you really don't need a whole lot on there, and it also uh, puts you at more risk of your buttons sticking and stuff like that whenever you go to put everything back together, which leads for a lot more sanding and a lot more chiseling away, which I'll get into that a little bit later. But it did have an effect on me, but luckily most of the buttons that I used were store-bought anyway. I only had to kind of sand away at some of the uh, buttons just a few of them but avoid that by not putting on such a thick coat of, of clear coat on your first coat make it not see this already looks wet and we don't really want that the first coat just kind of needs a, to be a light dusting and as I said painting like this is a lot of fun and it's really easy even for somebody like me 
to uh, get carried away and put just a little bit too much on on your first coat. So take it easy. No reason to put too much on there. We're going to do this in three solid coats. The second coat, you're going to want that to be a little bit thicker to where it looks just barely wet. Okay. Your second coat is there to kind of start really adding body to, uh, to your clear coat and really starts to get the colors to kind of come through. And then your third coat, you're going to want to put that one on to where the project looks wet, to where it looks like it does right here now. See how it's kind of glossy and whatnot? That's what it should look like when your third coat is put on. So again, first coat, thin. Second coat, medium. Third coat, uh, medium heavy. And I don't want you to think of it as heavy because when you think of heavy, you're going to put on too much. You just want it to look wet. Now that we have allowed our project to dry for 24 hours, it's time to put this thing back together. Before we do that, I'm going to discuss the difference between the older touchpad and the newer touchpad. This one's the newer one, and this white piece here has a, like a, a cradle that it sits in now, which is basically the the entire touchpad uh, is is acting as a cradle to hold this into place, which is actually what uh, pushes the button on the controller itself. And in order to get this touchpad board off, this thing is sitting recessed lower because this has a lip on it that the older touchpads don't have. You see, this one's flat. And uh, it makes it very difficult to get underneath of that. So I just chose to avoid all of that by using the factory touchpad that came with the controller that we painted before. This will work, I assure you. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and put our buttons back into place. Well, at least get them ready to get put back into place. While you're putting them back into place, you may notice that uh, some of the button areas may not hold the buttons as well. And you might have to get in there and kind of chisel away from the back side uh, some of the paint because it kind of got in there and maybe closed up the hole just a little bit, just tight enough to make the button stick, and we don't want that. Uh, we can also use some of our sandpaper and sand away the paint uh, inside the hole, whatever button it is that may uh, be sticking. And uh, you just it doesn't really take very much, uh, depending on how much paint you got in there, but if you've done all the steps the way I've showed you, you shouldn't really have a whole lot in there. It should just be a little bit of work that you have to do. Not, not too bad, if you even have to do it at all. But be aware, when you're doing a dip like this, you do run into that issue, or it is possible that you can run into that issue, so be prepared for that. So I've put the home button back into place first and then put the button pad behind it. You want to make sure that the blackest part of that is facing you. Okay, so there are two sides to this thing as there are everything. And the one that has the black pad facing you, the blackest pad, there's no like cloudiness to it. That's the side that you want facing you. Make sure that you do that with all of the button pads that you have. There are only three button pads that you're going to be using, obviously, that we took out before. One of them is being the home button. Then you have the D-pad, which the D-pad fits in anyway. There's nothing special about that when you drop it down in. It doesn't matter. It just it, They all fit the same, so there's nothing special about that that you have to look out for. And then we're going to put in our triangle button in the top slot for our button. The X button goes into the bottom slot. Our circle button goes to the right button slot. And our square button goes on the only button slot left open, which is your left button slot.
Now it is time to put our touchpad back into place and we want to make sure to hold the ribbon cable down flat against it before we put it into place. You just hook it onto that little bar, I guess we'll call it, that uh, fits across there. I mean, you saw where it came from, that's how it goes back in. And then when you're putting the controller back down, uh, there's a little hole there that that ribbon cable fits through in order to uh, attach back to the board where we disconnected it before. Now we're going to replace our right and left bumpers and triggers. When we're putting our triggers back into place, as I mentioned before, if you have an older controller, it's important that you know where those springs are. Uh, if you want to be able to see that specific controller, uh, the reassembly for that, I do have a tutorial on that controller. It is called the Joker PS4 controller. You can go to that tutorial and skip directly to reassembly, and there you have it. That is there for you. How convenient or inconvenient, whichever way you look at it. I try, okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not, it's not in this video, but you know where the video is. If you don't go looking for it, you are now lazy and it's not on me, so ha. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and reassemble the bottom part of the controller, putting our um, LED bar or our LED board back into place. I got caught up on the word there. Sorry about that. Uh, we put that back into place, screw in the silver screw, and then we're going to put the uh, the actual light bar that you see, you put that back into place, and then you put in your light disperser to kind of hold that snug into place. It just fits right back in there. Now what we're going to do is put the white piece that kind of holds everything all together back into place, just the opposite of how we took it out. Also make sure that your joysticks are in place before we screw anything down. Uh, that is imperative. You're not going to do much gaming without the joysticks, are you? I didn't show doing that, but I mean it's really easy. It's just the opposite of what you did before. You just push it back into place. Super easy, guys. Super, super easy. Alright, now what we're going to do is make sure that our blue piece of the ribbon cable is facing away from the battery. And you put it back into the slot that we removed it from before. Push on your home button to make sure that it is powering up the LED. And now we're going to go ahead and from the uh, trigger side forward, uh, we're going to put this back together, uh, basically at an angle or whatever. You just kind of roll it back on, again, from the trigger side forward. I'm kind of working against it, but I figure it out eventually just like this. Now that it's there, you've got these posts, you kind of have to put the controller handles down over and then slowly get it back together uh, it will pop back into place and everything fits nice and awesome just like you bought it at a store brand new it's time to put these screws back into place one at a time and I know that you're counting every second it takes because you are so ready to use your new controller that I helped you create I am so happy that you chose my video to help you create your new custom controller. And all of you out there who have done this already and you're watching this just because you're subscribed to me and you wanted to see what I did next, thank you so much and thank you to all of you subscribers who have done these tutorials and shared your projects with me. These are projects that I like to feature on my website. You can go there at www.drumblanket.com. Com. It is important that you put the www dot in there, otherwise I wouldn't mention it. Be sure to follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash drumblanket1 and follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash drumblanket. As a gesture of appreciation to my subscribers, I am giving this controller away once I reach 5,000 subscribers, so be sure to subscribe so you can get in on some of that. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.